Welcome to the Geek to Geek podcast, where America... No. Sorry. America! It's, it's the 4th of July-ish, right around now. Uh, it's that week. I'm Void, and I'm here with my co-host, Beige. Merco, Alabama, nice. Alabama man. Oh man. Okay. Uh, today we're talking about well, we're doing kind of a time a half little episode to give us a week off. We are doing the listener question answer slash mini topics, all of that stuff. Everything that we asked you guys to send us, we're gonna run through a bunch of it right now for fun, and because we wanted to, and because it's a great excuse to have an extra week off for us, but you guys still get something in your feed, right? That basically encompasses it. Yeah, pretty much. I have my mic muted. Yeah. Pretty much. It, uh, you know, I like having a couple of weeks. It's like being able to be super lazy. And even though I love this, it's like, I'm not doing anything right now. <laughs> we like to give ourselves a week off every once in a while. Um, as long as stuff gets into the feed anyway. So this let's get true. into it. Uh, we asked you guys for kind of ask us anything questions or mini topics, any of that kind of stuff. So the first one is from KJ Miller. She said, I'd like to hear about your podcasting routine. I'm always interested in ways to improve my own. And I think we talked about this a little bit last time that we did one of these but i can run through some of the high points from my end again so basically when we do an episode i pull together all of the talking points and the pre-show notes i try to keep us on time when we're recording like if you guys notice sometimes i like verbally will push bj along to like get things going (laughs) and other times i will just let him talk for a while that's usually me keeping an eye on the time and just judging where we're at based on how Mm -hmm. many like talking points we have left to get to so i'm kind of in charge of timing especially with my production background and like video background and news video background where timing is very important so i'm in charge of that part um afterwards we get the files to me um we record two files separately locally and he sends his to me mine's already on my computer um i do all the processing and cleanup of the audio so that it sounds good hopefully for you guys um so i end up hearing the episode three times I hear it when we record, I hear it when I edit, and then I hear it when the episode goes live and I listen for like a final QA. So when I edit, I usually edit it at two or three times speed because I was a video editor professionally for years and I can do that. Like I've trained my ear for it. Um, And that's probably also one of the reasons that I listen to podcasts at two times speed on my own for fun anyway, just because I can do that. I, I don't know. My brain works that way at this point. So... I edit at two or three times speed generally, unless it's something that needs a lot of like really close editing. Um, I'll convert the episode. I write some placeholder show notes that sometimes end up being the show notes, sometimes not. It depends if Beach gets to them again by the time the episode Forgets goes them. up. <clears throat> I wasn't going to say that. Um, and then I upload it to, I, we use Lipsyn. So I upload it to Lipsyn, make sure it's all scheduled out and schedule it. Um, and then, like I said, when the podcast hits the feed on Thursday night or whenever, if we push it out early, but usually Thursday night, I do a QA listen just to make sure that I didn't miss anything. And if I did, I'll go do a quick cleanup, but I've never had to do that. I just, it's kind of my one last check. Um, and then I will post about it on the blog and social media and try to remember to put it on the subreddit, but sometimes I forget that. And I'll usually poke at Beige to get him to post it places too. That's kind of my side of it in a nutshell. And you know, I completely forgot that I was going to start posting it to my blog with the notes and everything so that that audience would get it. And I did it one time and then started consolidating and never have, have, have been busy at work. So I need to get back to doing that as well. And you pretty much covered it as well. You know, we go in throughout the week at different times and fill out the pre-show notes, uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about the topic as opposed to writing it out because that's the way I've planned everything my entire life for good or bad. I did it when I was teaching and I do it with podcasts where I'll see all of the topics. I'll see what we're doing and then work on the topic, uh, the talking points in my head and then go and just fill them out at one time whenever we're right before we record or a day or two before and uh pretty much that way it's my that's my end to go and try not to forget the show notes and figure out what actually will work and what doesn't nice okay ava n asks with all the new streaming content how do you guys keep up manage and decide what to watch i i basically don't i don't i don't keep up i well i've talked about it before like my system where i just put things into a list and when I get to them, I get to them. Or if I ever don't know what to do with my time, I open the list, decide if I want to watch something or play something or read something, tap on that list and I just do the top thing on it. So generally, if I hear about something uh, specifically like streaming content and it sounds good, I will just add it to my, it's basically like movies and TV shows list and I'll just throw it on the bottom. And then whenever it works its way up to the top is when I'll watch it. 
unless it's something I'm super like pumped about, then I'll just bump it up to the top. But that's how I do it. How do you do it? I I take recommendations that a lot of times I will listen to what other people are talking about, like with Master of None over the last few weeks, where if somebody says they've been through something that's really, really good, then I go try it and get into it that way, where I don't keep a lot of a backlog. I add a lot of stuff to my Netflix, uh, my list, and then when I'm bored, I'll just kind of scroll through it and see if there's anything there that catches my attention, that there is no rhyme or reason to it. Where it's just, it is entirely based on my fickle mood nice. and what I hear other people talking about that catches my attention. It's very much an, oh, new shiny kind of thing. And in terms of just YouTube videos and things like that, it's whatever my wife puts on, things like that, because I don't do a whole lot of YouTube. There you go. Uh, data error asks, frequent listener data error, um, are there any topics that you'd want to cover on a podcast but won't or can't for any reason? Examples like subject matter that doesn't match up with the network, or it would create one-sided conversations, etc. So I guess the first thing I would say here is that we do episodes that are one-sided, and if you guys haven't noticed, then we are doing a good job of those. Um, That's there true. are topics that we will pick that I will say, this is going to be basically on me. Are you okay with that? And we always bounce it off the other person. But we have done those plenty mm-hmm. of times where like one of us has a ton to say and the other one barely knows anything about it. And we do the episode anyway. So the fact mm-hmm. that you asked the way you did means that we're probably doing a good job of it. Don't you think? I think so, because it tends to be the other one asking more questions when it's right. one sided instead of having a back and forth discussion. But I guess that speaks to us or your your editing maybe it's that where if it doesn't come across as one person making a point and the other one just being like and what about this and what about this or maybe they're good questions on both our sides yeah i think i think it's a combination of all those things i do try to massage it in the edit a little bit but i mean i think we've landed on a format that works for us um but outside of that what else would we want to cover that we can't or won't um i would love to talk in depth about like my job because i love the work i'm doing um i do lots of digital marketing stuff and i have a background in production which you guys know about because i mention it all the time i i am in a job now that is a combination of a lot of that kind of stuff but it's impractical just because of ndas and proprietary information so like if that wasn't in play i could easily do an entire digital marketing podcast every single week and i would have fun doing it but it just you know i would have to tiptoe around things that are the nitty gritty which is actually like some of the really fun stuff just because i you know i could probably do it but i don't want to constantly be second guessing myself is this like intellectual property is this something i shouldn't be sharing like like I said, I could probably make it happen, but it's just not worth it for me to try to be so careful about it. So I just don't. I just don't talk about it. But I would love See, to do I that think, one. I think you should do it. I think you should set up a new marketing podcast because I love listening to marketing podcasts. Mm. And I, 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 I just want to listen. Um, there's Besides that, though, there's probably off-topic stuff that we could do at the drop of a hat. But yeah, like not having show notes prepped makes me nervous because like I mentioned before, (laughs) I'm kind of in charge of timing. And at this point, I roughly know how much show notes equates to how much time in the show. Um, So without that, I get kind of uh, I don't know (laughs) about stuff. And then also, I would say like the live play, actual play type of podcast, something like the Adventure Zone would be super fun. Um, I know Joe from the Geek 2 podcast, which is on our network, and you guys should be listening to it if you're not. Um, he's working on one right now, but for mm-hmm. me personally, it's the scheduling that makes it so hard for me. Like, I at this point, I feel maxed out doing one podcast a week. I can't imagine doing much more than this just between my job and my kids and family and all of that kind of stuff. Um, so you know maybe maybe in the future but maybe i mean maybe the one with joe will work out for me i'm not sure yet so i'm still kind of feeling it out but like i said i'm kind of maxed out on my mental bandwidth at the moment and then i also want to bring back video game news now in a different format eventually um i think the way i would probably bring it back is to highlight 
like the top news of the week instead of doing literally like every story like I was doing on a day to day basis before that worked when I was freelancing and I had time and I could just pull things together really quick and kick out like a, you know, five or 10 minute episode off the top of my head. Um, But that's not practical anymore. So I think I would need a co-host. I think I would do a weekly format and I would probably just pick the highlight news of the week that I'm interested in talking about. That's how that one would be. But those are kind of those are all of these ideas that are in my head that might happen eventually, but don't anticipate any of those soon. But how about you? I mean, I would love to be able to have an in-depth conversation uh, more often about the current news cycle and uh, how we consume media and what happens when we consume media. I really that that's something that's really close to me, but it's also so political and politicizing that there's no way that that's a conversation that I don't have the mental capacity to deal with when uh, when it comes to comments, listener feedback, that kind of stuff that it would be it would be a soapbox and I don't want to do that. That's not who who I am. Yeah, we've talked about that before because we had thought about maybe doing an episode or two about it, and there's just like too much baggage that comes with it. Even though we could, we could easily talk about that. We could talk about media and the news. I mean, I am a student of the media, and I worked in news. Like, I have a lot of thoughts about it, and. But again, it would quickly become political and there's way too much baggage. And I mean, the same thing goes for like coding and Internet stuff with web design, marketing, all of that. Like you had mentioned, I would love to do that. And a lot of it is very close to work where I know you you have talked about where it's a little different for me, but it's still very close to never being able to shut off that even when I'm on Facebook doing family stuff, I'm a member of different groups where I will see things about web design and development and it filters through my newsfeed and then I start thinking and go down a rabbit hole that is work and it's really dangerous to include that on the podcast like you had mentioned and I don't deal with NDAs and any of the stuff I'm working on right now but it is it it, it this is a very slippery slope when it comes to stuff like that and I mean I would love to talk about that uh just kind of personal mental health stuff. I think that mental health in the geek community is a very important topic, and I've talked a bit about my anxiety and different struggles like that, but really going in depth and having almost an interview style with people also who have dealt with that is something that I would like to bring on guests who have dealt with different parts of geek culture and how it's affected them, their family, and stuff like that. It's, again, baggage. And then I've also, and this one, the uh, the next one is the criticism of geek culture, because there are a lot of things about geek culture that I hold, I'm very judgy about. And, you know, without uh, not going into any detail here, I think that there's a lot of, of conversations that need to happen around geek culture in terms of making it inclusive and healthy and that there are, I have a lot of things to say about it. But again, that's a soapbox and me getting incredibly negative on some stuff and I'm not abusive and not uh, I don't want to alienate anybody because I don't tend to hold anything against people personally, but it will sound like that. And these conversations, while I feel like they need to happen, this is not the place for it. And then also fitness and nutrition. I'd like to talk a lot more about that. But uh, same as you with video game news now, the Geek Fitness uh, Health Hacks podcast has really fallen off because it has taken my mental my mental capacity between freelancing and family and everything and actually doing the fitness and nutrition stuff. Just one podcast a week is all I could handle on it. So I would love to be able to get back into doing that and having more of those conversations and keeping me on track. But right now, like you said, hopefully eventually. Yeah. And I mean, part of it is like, this is, I mean, having a co-host makes this podcast more important and also more fun yes. than the other ones. And it's so like much more knowing that, I mean, in a way, either of us could say no in any given week, but the way that we're like kind of beholden to each other to do this weekly, even the weeks where it's just like, I have so much going on. I have to carve out a time to do this with you. I always yes. love doing it when we sit down and we actually record. And exactly. I, I love the end result. I love talking to the community. Like even the weeks where I just don't feel like it, I do it anyway, and I have never regretted that. Whereas the other ones, like a solo one, there are times where I would do that because I felt like I had to, and then I was just like, oh, afterwards. Yeah, Does that make where sense? It is, it's so draining. And I, yeah. I, you can tell if you go back and listen probably to either of us when we were doing them solo, where 
it's so draining and it's almost as though we don't care. And that's something about this podcast because of it being such a back and forth conversation and the topics that we do talk about. It has we've rarely hit on a straight up topic that we don't talk about. Uh it's always a discussion between us. Should we cover this or should we sh- or should we not kind of? And we both have ideas on it. And that really helps keep us on track because, yeah, like you can hear, there are a bunch of conversations we want to have. But having both of us really keeps the podcast on track in terms of making sure that it is as inclusive as we want it to be. Yeah. And I mean, you can some weeks we purposely pick a topic that's shorter because we want to just talk about what we've been doing that week. And we don't want like a whole lot of mental energy into it, you know, so we pick ones that are low hanging fruit that we can cover in 10 or 15 minutes. And then we can just get to our geekery so that we can talk about like we can catch up. You know, we use this to catch up and you guys listen in, which is cool. And I love that. But like, which is cool. And I didn't think people would listen to it. I mean, to go on a tangent on this one, I didn't think people would want to listen to that. And it really makes me happy that you guys do. But like, I I mean, I love like the weekly geekery, just like, how's it going? What are you doing? I mean, you're playing WoW again. Like, it's interesting to me, even though I'm not playing it and all of that kind of stuff. You know, the weekly geekery is my favorite part of the show, even though it's really fun to like put my mind and effort into a different topic every week. I look forward to the geekery part of it the most. Yeah, I do, too. That's my favorite part, even though a lot of times I think I haven't done a lot this week. And then I end up having five or six things as I sit down. I was like, oh, yeah, I did stuff. I didn't just sit on the couch and I didn't just work. Yeah, exactly. Well, and like uh, at the start of season two, which was like the start of the new year, we had had a couple episodes off in a row because we had built in a buffer for ourselves to take the holidays. And we had that episode that was just all geekery. And that was so fun to do just to like catch up. What have you been doing? We had a lot of time to do geeky stuff. Let's talk about it. Like that was super fun. And But I don't think that that kind of thing, as fun as it is, um, you know, to stay on kind of this topic and this question, I don't think doing that as a straight podcast, that being the only thing we do, I don't think it will work. I think it would get very boring and too spastic. And I don't think that as a podcast that has longevity, like having the topic space like this. So it's I want to talk about that stuff, but I also want to keep it under the main under the umbrella of having a topic space discussion as well. Yeah, no, I think we've landed on a good format, which is good. But obviously, based on what we just said, we have lots and lots of ideas. If we ever do have more mental energy or time or I mean, if we could ever turn this into like a full time gig, we have tons of podcasts like in the can ready to start doing that. That would be no problem. Um, So if you guys go to uh, audibletrial.com slash geek to geekcast, (laughs) every one of you and uh, get a free trial. You help us do that. Yeah, or maybe someday we set up a Patreon or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's, yeah, we've it's an talked about this discussion. stuff, but yeah, that's... Yeah. So, so, so it kind of got off a tangent that, that came circle back around, I guess. Yeah, there but we yeah, go. Yeah, stuff. Stuff. We have lots of stuff that we could talk about, potentially. That's the answer to your question. Um, Rob <laughs> from The Comic Box, which, again, a podcast on our network that you should be listening to, The Comic Box. Look it up. It's great. Um, he asks, I still don't understand video game classification. Triple A... Double seven backwards Q. What do they mean? Um, <laughs> Man, those backwards Q games are good this year, right? Oh yeah, for sure. So I guess it's kind of a nebulous answer. Triple um, A, the the best equivalent I could find that most people would understand. Triple A is equivalent to like a blockbuster summer movie, right? Yes. What does blockbuster mean? I don't know if it has a like actual defined term, but I don't think most people know either. It's just kind of it's nebulous, but there's like a triple A AAA game. There's like a big name publisher attached. There's a large budget for the game. There's yep. lots of marketing surround it, surrounding it. Um, and they just like they push it. They push it really hard and it has high production values. It's kind of like blockbuster movies, right? I mean. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's the way I think about it. It's the ones that you cannot make without a hundred million dollars or so of an entire two companies worth of teams putting it out. You have a hundred different animators, all of this, where it is it is absurd the number of people who are doing it, where versus indie games where you have one to six people maybe, or even a larger team, but they don't have the backing or the funding. Where where it's almost like the you know, the indie movies that you see that are put together that are low low budget, but but still trying to get the the art part of it 
out there more where I always think about it as being, you know, the blockbusters being the summer movies like Iron Man and the Avengers and Independence Day, uh, Resurrection, Insurrection, whatever it something, was. whatever it was, uh, unmemorable, um, and Terminator Genesis or whatever this year is. Right. Uh, Spider Man. Spider Man's going to come. Spider Man. Uh, Spider Man Homecoming. That's going to be a blockbuster. It's going to make so much money. It has so many people employed. It has the, just this this big push behind it, kind of like Call of Duty. It's one that everybody has heard of, regardless of being a gamer that it's like yeah my son's playing call of duty um yeah but i mean call of duty is kind of, kind of equivalent to like a marvel movie if, if yeah. we're keeping this analogy between the two things you know it's like you know what it is when you're going into it you know generally the production value and the vibe of it and like what to expect but it's still huge amounts of money poured into it lots of time and development effort giant teams behind it and all this marketing like that's that's triple a and then like BJ mentioned, there's indie games, which are small teams. They're focus teams. Um, sometimes big publishers will pick them up to publish the game at the end. But it's develop- like No Man's Sky. Yeah, but it, the development team itself tends to be very small and very focused. And they're trying to do one thing really well. And everything else about the game is kind of peripheral to that. Um, and then there were for a long time these kind of like double A games that don't really yeah. exist in the marketplace anymore, which is weird. They've fallen off. Over and the it makes me sad. Years. Yeah, I, I mean, love these games. These are the ones that made me happy growing up that you have things like Gex or something like that where they're doing something that is tried and true, but also trying to push like one element of it and trying new things out. Bubsy 3D was a garbage game, but I loved it. And it was not a triple A game and it was not an indie game, but it was that middle of the road. Oh, here's a game I'm going to rent for the weekend. And if it sucks, it sucks and I'm still going to play it. Yeah, exactly. And these are the games that would consistently get like 70s and 80s out of 100 on, you know, the Metacritic or Metacritic equivalent of the day. And like we still get games in that range, but they typically be there. These days they are typically triple A games that have bombed. You know, they did not meet (laughs) expectations, so they fell down into that, like, 70 to 80 range on Metacritic, whereas before there were games that were, like, happy to get into that range, and it's like their dreams have come true. Those were those double-A games. They succeeded. Yeah, that that was was their goal. It was... They weren't trying to be Mario 64. You didn't have... And, and the reason I bring this up is this is always the one in my mind that Bubsy 3D for the PlayStation came out at the same time, roughly, as Mario 64. It was not trying to be Mario 64. There was no way that the developers of Bubsy 3D was trying to be Super Mario 64. But they succeeded at making their game, which was a garbage game, and I think they knew it, but it was fun. I liked it. Jumping Flash on the original PlayStation, stuff like this. And it, it was those kind of fun first party games that they knew were not going to be major stuff. Um, it makes me sad that they're not around. Yeah, that's kind of where we've landed now. I mean, we kind of have AAA and we kind of have indie and that's almost it in the marketplace, which is really weird. It doesn't seem sustainable. And we'll see what happens with the gaming industry over the next couple of years here. But yep. hopefully that that sheds some light onto when we're talking about AAA or indie games. Um, Sergeant Bilbo, frequent listener, ha- says, has there been anything geeky that you initially love but grew to dislike later on? And I was trying to think about it. Um, I don't have a whole lot here except shows that I watched when I was a kid that I thought were like amazing and then revisiting them as an adult. And I guess the same could be said for a lot of like, it's probably that nostalgia factor, right? Anything that you look back on and you have nostalgia about, and then you go revisit it as an adult and you just Mm -hmm. go, Oh, I wish I hadn't have come back to this. I wish I would have left it alone in my mind. Um, yep. And like I encountered this a little bit when I tried to play through the Zelda series this year. Yeah. And I talked about that. Like I like Zelda a lot less after doing that. And I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have just let that series sit. And it. And the I feel bad that, about like, that in particular because I was pushing you to do that. I know. You were like, I want to do another playthrough. I'm like, do Zelda. Zelda's awesome. And then you play it. And I'm like. Oh, I ruined you. Oh, uh, well, I mean, the games... I broke void, no! No, but the games in the Zelda series that I played and liked, I now think they are, like, masterpieces of gaming. Like, they are amazing. Right. The good ones in that series are just fantastic. But there's a lot in the series that I'm just kind of like, oh. 
okay, that, that was a lot worse than I remembered it. Whereas like visiting Final Fantasy, when I did my whole playthrough of Final Fantasy, it made me appreciate the series more. And now I love it. Like I intend to probably go back and play through the whole Final Fantasy series again someday because my love for it only grows. But that's that's the main thing for me um, is just the nostalgia factor, just revisiting things from childhood or teenage or whatever as an adult and then finding them wanting. And for me, it's Doctor Who. It's about the only thing that I can think of that I was mega super ultra into. And then at this point, I pretty much despise it. I can't make myself go back and watch anything that I liked before. Uh, The old episodes are hard for me to watch. Just I can't get into it. And part of it is without getting onto a soapbox is because of and I feel like it's almost hipstery of me. I liked it before it really hit the mainstream. And I was watching it uh, back when when uh, back when I was in a cult TV class and was introduced to it that way. And then I started seeing merchandise everywhere. I started seeing people and they were talking about it all the time. And I realized that these people having conversations about it annoyed me and it pushed me further away from it. And that kind of feels the way uh, that Star Wars is doing right now. So I'm doing my best to limit that because having so many people who are enjoying it is great, but when they're wrong about it, then I get angry and I don't want to talk about Star Wars with every person who checks me out at uh, Publix. So I don't engage that (laughs) way. So I'm not a social geek when it comes to stuff like that. That kind of thing tends to be very personal to me. And I talk to a close group of friends about it and Dr. Who, I don't know. I just, I just can't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I liked Dr. Who a little bit in there when it was uh Matt Smith, that was kind of, and David Tennant. There was, there right. was a period in there where my brother was super into it and he got me to jump in at the right point. And right. I liked Same a couple seasons of it. And then, you know, they keep switching the doctor and it got to whatever that latest doctor's, I, I don't even remember Peter the guy. Capaldi? Yeah, that's the one. And I just didn't like it. So I just bounced off. But I, I don't know. Doctor Who is kind of its own beast. I guess I haven't talked about it a yeah. whole lot from my perspective. But that's okay. And yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, so Troidal asks, do you geek out about anything that feels more mainstream than geeky? And I would say for me, it's like, it, there's a couple cooking shows that my wife and I watch, and yeah. I typically don't do background TV, but this is the closest equivalent that I would have to it, and it's mostly MasterChef Australia at this point. There are a couple others that sometimes when they come on, my wife and I will sit down and like turn it on, and you know we'll talk about it and like engage with it a little bit, but also kind of we're watching it to make fun of it. Sometimes we're watching it for the mm. people, and sometimes we're on our phones and it's kind of in the background. Um, so yeah, some some cooking shows that are mainstream and not. Super super geeky but i do watch them a little bit and i tend to nerd out like i am super suburban white in the like generic cliche of how much i love and geek out on hgtv shows food network shows just the uh, diy network shows just just i love the the house hunter style reality show i know they're all staged but there's like there was one called lakefront bargain hunt and I, i i like like something there was a beach show like that too where people bought really cheap beach houses man I love those like I geek out so hard like I'll watch all of them everywhere and uh, so yeah just I, I, I way mainstream way cliche white dude married white guy but <laughs> so so good <laughs> nice um time travel Marty asks how do you determine which platform to play a game on PS4 versus PC Xbox One versus PS4 all that kind of stuff um, what helps you make the decision so For me, um, it's the type of game, it's the genre, it's the convenience factor, it's kind of what I have time to sit in front of at that moment, and also what kind of controller I want to use. So it's a lot of different things play into it for me. Um, Honestly, if it's a first-person shooter and it's day and date the same on all platforms, I typically want to play it on PC. I like mouse and keyboard controls better. They're more precise for that kind of thing. If it is a strategy game that's like a real-time strategy, I'll always go for PC. Oh, yeah, absolutely. If it's a third-person action game, I typically will pick it up on PS4 just because, like, I'm not really bought into the Xbox uh, infrastructure right now. Um, Xbox One failed to capture me, even though I was... I barely had a PS3 at all. I was all in on the Xbox 360, and then when they made the transition to 
this generation of consoles, um, they lost me, and I flipped back over to PS to PlayStation because I used to do PlayStation Two a lot, um, and then I basically skipped PlayStation Three and I picked up a PS Four. So, you know, I'm I guess some examples here. So, like, what am I going to pick up later this year? Um, if Destiny Two was coming out day and date on all the systems, I would probably get it on PC. It looks like it's coming out on console first, so I'll probably get it on PS4. Is it? Yeah, by like two months, which is good lord. I had no idea that it was that man. Yeah, because I'm looking at PC on it, obviously. So it was no, it's, man, I didn't it's know like that. months apart, which is sad. Um, I would rather play it on PC, but like you know, Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War, whatever the new one is called. Um, I'll get that on playstation 4 just because i like the controller and the form factor and some of it is like if the game was made for pc first then it's usually good on pc but if it was made for consoles and pc at the same times it always feels like the pc version has more bugs in it which is yeah. sad because a lot of the time i would pick up some of these games play them on pc with a controller because i have a couple controllers hooked up to it um yeah so i mean i just i bounce back and forth a lot at this point i wish everything was on the nintendo switch because I, <laughs> yeah i like the form factor of it but that's impractical um i am super looking forward to like you know mario games and stuff later this year so yeah i, I don't have a real answer there's no one thing that i can say you know x this x is why i pick up a game on whatever console i do it's very much a mixture of things and for me i have a computer so i play them on computer um, <laughs> I, I don't i don't have a ps4 or xbox one i've got an xbox or i have a ps3 and a nintendo 2ds that's my wife's technically and a ps vita and for the most part i i play on pc because that's what i've got I haven't run into my computer is about seven years old that uh, no, no, it's about five years old. I bought it right after my dad passed away in 2012. And the only thing that I have not been able to play on it between then and now has been the Oculus Rift, that those are the only games that it hasn't run at high standard. And I'm okay with that. So probably in another few years, I'll need a new video card or power supply or motherboard or something. And I can do that because I tend to be an online gamer more than anything. So I transitioned back in college to being a PC gamer. So I got a computer, so I play on computer. There you go. Good. That's a good, straightforward answer that I did not have. <laughs> Um, a frequent listener, contributor, and fellow Final Fantasy V, 4Job Fiesta participant, Capsule J, asks... Are there any geeky things that you love that you just can't sell other people on, even fellow geeks? For me, it is modern interactive fiction. I think that people are doing amazing things in that space, and I, you can call it choose your own adventure, but it has progressed very far past that now. Um, there are so many good games out there. There are so many good like interactive fiction It's hard. It's like, do I call it a book? Do I call it an experience? Do I call it a game? Um, but that kind of you know, I, I haven't found a better way to say it except modern interactive fiction because it's not like the choose your own adventure books. Like there's so many more. Um, there's a whole series that I keep trying to get BJ to read or play uh -huh. through that is all about being your own superhero. And it's like there are so many different stats and decisions that it tracks as you go along. It, in some ways, it puts Mass Effect to shame right with the amount wow. of things that it's like tracking and like all the different branching paths as much as modern AAA video games try to give you branching paths there are limits there because they have to make the assets and the gameplay to go with it once you move into this modern interactive fiction space you can do anything because it's just words on a page and it's just tracking some stats in the background so stuff like that um I can't sell people on it. I've tried. I've tried a bunch, <laughs> and people just don't care. They hear me start to talk about it, and they go, oh, yeah, choose your own adventure. I remember that. And then they move on in their head. And I can see and it. I can see them kind of mentally glaze over, and then I just give up. I have the superhero ones on my iOS wish list that I need to buy and give it a shot, but it's been something that I, I didn't glaze over because I love the idea, but I also haven't cared enough to invest in it yet. Okay. And maybe someday, and, but did you have anything that you love that you think can't of sell other people on? That maybe I was, I cannot think of a single thing that I geek out about that I can't get other people that I keep trying to share that I can't get other people invested in because I can't think of a whole lot that I 
try to push on other people. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Maybe you, if can you think of anything that I've just failed at? I mean, I try to get horror, but that's not. No, I'm that's just you me to like being horror resistant. stuff. Yeah, I mean that's, no. and I can't think of. That's okay. I, I can think of answer. things on individual people that I that I that I know other people who I can you know nerd out about that stuff with. Yeah. So I don't. I can't think of anything like okay. that. That's like, not a bad like, place to be in, though. No, it's not. It means I have someone to talk to about all of my geeky stuff generally. Yeah. Um. If you guys do want to check out the one I was talking about, it's called the Heroes Rise trilogy. So just Google that; it'll pop up. There's three of them obviously <laughs> it's a trilogy um it's it's really good and i i wa- want more people to read it and then talk about it um fuzzy cow give us a bunch so i put these at the end fuzzy cow thank you frequent frequent contributor on <laughs> a bunch of places but especially reddit um so they gave us a bunch of episode ideas some of these things are obvious like e3 expectations e3 wrap-up so we did that already sorry i know i asked for these questions like a month ago um summer movie 2017 preview we're probably a little late for that but they also suggest like a disney episode which i think is a great idea we should add that to the list because we both probably have a lot to say about disney in general don't you think yeah i think we would that's a topic that we could go into that for months honestly because i love disney stuff like i really do i'm i'm kind of i love me some I love kids movies and I love uh, kids TV and cartoons. So whenever I'm sad, like having a really bad depressive episode and I can't sleep, I'll go in and watch Disney cartoons to be able to kind of just chill and relax and make myself feel better. And I have very mixed feelings about Disney. So I think it would make a good episode between the two of us because like I have all this nostalgia from childhood about Disney stuff I watched. And then I just didn't care about anything they did for a really long time. And now they're swinging back around into like they own Star Wars, my favorite fictional universe. Like they're in charge of Marvel. They're in charge of a bunch of stuff. And they're trying things like bringing back DuckTales. Like th- there's probably a lot there. I can't we can- wait. I know there's probably a lot there we could dig into. So we will add Disney to our episode topic list and get to it at some point. And then also cartoons, which we did talk about in one episode, but maybe we could do another one. I don't know. I don't yeah. know how we would frame it exactly. Because there we've talked a lot about on in, in the background, not not on on air of how we wanted to cover cartoons and animation, because there are so many ways to. I mean, you have anime, you have adult cartoons, you have kids cartoons and you have void not necessarily liking a lot of kids cartoons you have me not liking a lot of anime so we've had a hard time structuring that one yeah and i mean like even the ones that i try to get into or i get into a little bit like eventually i bounce off of like i know i talked about i watched all of voltron season one when they Mm -hmm. brought it back on netflix and i tried to get into season two and i didn't even mention it in my geekery when i tried to do it because i bounced off of it so fast that i I didn't want to bring it up and just be like yeah i tried it didn't like it i mean that's not (laughs) it's not a super good conversation like a lot of the times i try things and then the conversation is me explaining why i didn't like them or what i think they could do better or why they would be for other people because a lot of the times i can see that but when you get to the second season of a show that we've already talked a bunch about, like I've said all of the interesting things that we have to say about Voltron and why it would be for people and why I liked the first season. And then season two, I was just like, yeah, oh, okay, I guess maybe mm. it's not for me. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Cartoons, we have trouble structuring just because I don't watch many of them. But Disney, I feel like maybe that's something to dig into more in the future. And then Fuzzy Cow also suggests, did you do an episode on competitive gaming? We have not, not really, um, especially no. not like esports. So that's another one that we could do. I will add it to the idea list. So thank you yeah, for those. Now we we did discuss speedrun gaming in uh, last year. Whenever the uh, now the name is escaping me, whenever I th- uh, can't think about it, but whenever I'm thinking about it, but we uh, we did talk about speedrunning and the level of skill that that takes. Where we've talked a bit about skilled gaming, and uh, so so you can go back and listen to that, uh, which is a kind of a tangent on this, but the idea of people doing that for fundraising and that being their their skill and being the best at that that they can yeah and then fuzzy cow also gives us a bunch of questions so what are some ideas or concepts that you want to love but every time you try you just bounce off of for me uh 4x games like 4x games they are interesting systems right like they should be in my wheelhouse and when they're made correctly they should also have a bunch of like emergent storytelling and tales about you know civilizations growing and expanding over time and 
they just, I don't know. I always bounce off of them. I always bounce off of them and I keep buying them and I shouldn't because I know that the genre is just not for me at this point, but I always think maybe this one got it right. Or maybe this one is doing something different to the point where it's going to hook me finally. But outside of I tell you every time to stop it. I know you do outside of forex games. (laughs) I don't, I don't think there's anything else that uh, I can't get into. What about you? Sandbox games every time. I mean, this will be a good opportunity for another title. It's like sandbox games are like communism. They're good in theory, but terrible in playing. Um, Like we talked about a few weeks ago, and I think it was Capsule J that said we missed an opportunity. Um, But but really, sandbox games, I really love the idea of them, and I keep trying. And then between 60 and 90 minutes, I'm like, I'm done. Bored now. Kind of like Willow and Buffy, where she's like, bored now, flay. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's the way I am. It's like, steam return. So yeah. it's, uh, I just I just can't. I want to so bad, but I can't. Um, I also asked what didn't or doesn't get the respect that it deserves. Um, a couple years ago, my answer here would have been Star Wars, because it didn't. Right. And I love Star Wars. These days, everyone is back into Star Wars. Everybody loves it again. Um and now I, it's weird. I kind of feel like one of the crowd, whereas like my yeah. love for Star Wars never went away. Like I loved the expanded universe. So I guess I guess one of the things I could still say is that like the Star Wars expanded universe, especially the old one, was very in depth. There was a lot there, and there was a lot to see, and it never really got the respect that it deserves. Um, and then also just the creation of the first Star Wars movie, uh, well, especially the first one, but the first trilogy and like what it did for yeah. filmmaking as a whole. Whether or not you like those movies, what it did for filmmaking is just astonishing. And if you've never looked into it, it's worth a Google or a Wikipedia page or whatever. Um, It's just it's amazing. Like I there's way too much to get into right now. But what Star Wars did in the creation of those movies, that probably doesn't get the respect it deserves either. What do you got? Yeah. Um, For me, thinking about it, it was comics that aren't the marvel cinematic universe that i I feel like rob will back me up on this but people still when at least around me whenever i bring it up they it's always a kind of like you said with star wars where you're just one of the guys now you're just one of the you know part of the crowd it's comics to me is the same way where i look at comics uh as being a different medium altogether as being a storytelling medium where new things are able to happen new stories are being able to be told that that it's something that is way more than what the MCU does and it's something that has a great depth to it but a lot of people only look at it through the lens of the DC universe and only through the lens of the Marvel universe uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and you'll see things like Suicide Squad which I'm sorry to all of you guys who like Suicide Squad but it's garbage and and when they do movies like that it makes the legit stories and narratives that are being told and issues that are being handled in some of those comics completely uh that it doesn't give them the respect they deserve i mean that really is it makes them seem less than and it's something that that bugs me having grown up on comics yeah yeah i can see that one i mean i would say comics in general a little bit just based on like like we we don't obsess over how many people download an episode, but we we keep an eye on it. We see what you guys mm-hmm. are interested in. We know the episodes that get more traffic than any other. Like our Zelda Breath of the Wild episode is by far the most downloaded out of all of them as of Man, right now. Man, you guys when we're love recording that this. one. Yeah, we know every time we talk about Nintendo or Mario or Zelda, like we get more traffic. Like we could lean harder into that, but mostly we're just here to talk about what we think is interesting. Um. But one of the things that we've noticed is every time that we center an episode around comics, uh, downloads go down. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just that in general. I think the idea of comic books puts people off even before they listen to it. Because I know that not as many people listen to those episodes. They just see the title and they're like, oh, I'll skip that one. So Yeah, it's like, oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'll, yeah. I may see that movie or, you know, I'm, I'm not going to read that. I mean, last time I checked, our comics episode from season one was our least downloaded episode ever out of all of the ones that we've done. So, Mm -hmm. hey, if you guys think that deserves a little bit more respect, go back and download that one. Like it was a it was a decent discussion. And we mentioned comics. It was a good discussion. It it gave us a lot of things to read on our own, Uh, but it it did. It didn't get the love that it deserved because, I mean, 
I think it was episode two or three. Yeah. And even then, those episodes tend to be fairly high download because of people going back and listening to the backlog. And they skip that one, which oh, is yeah. which is a shame. And I mean, I would also say, like, if you want to give comics a chance, like, check out the comic box with Rob on the podcast network. Like, yeah, I'm not super into comics. I don't you know, I go months and months between reading them. Um, I will easily go three, four, six months between picking up like a new issue of something or, you know, until I go and resubscribe to Marvel Unlimited and play catch up a little bit. Despite that, I listen to Rob's episode every week and it's always interesting because like he has a depth of knowledge there that I don't have and it gives context and it gives history and it, it gives all of the interesting parts of like diving deep into like a Wikipedia page or like reading through an entire backlog. Yeah. But instead of having to like put up with all the junk around it and like that bad comic book culture or like reading old issues that might not be interesting, you can just listen to Rob talk about it and get the summary. And I, I love that about it. So don't discount the comic box either because it's a really good show and I like listening to it every week. So yeah. Yeah, I know. And it's not even a thing because he's, you know, part of us that he that he's our buddy it's uh it's that he does a really good show and again his topic is one that deserves more respect so go give go give go give rob some love y'all yeah do it do it um okay last question from fuzzy cow things you're looking forward to in 2017 geeky bucket list items so we talked about a lot about what we're already liked from the year when we did our kind of midway episode throughout the year the one thing i'm still super hyped about that hasn't come out yet is Super Mario Odyssey. Like, I love Mario. I love Mario platformer games. And I think I mentioned this in the E3 episode, but my three favorite series of games at this point are Mario platformers, Assassin's Creed, and Final Fantasy. Not in that order. The order switches around just depending on my mood. But somehow those three, even though, like, Assassin's Creed is basically like popcorn like stuff at this point you know it's it's mm -hmm. an annual series it doesn't change that much but those three things um those three series are my favorite and i'm getting like all of them this year so wait so well, is the assassin's creed this year or is it next year no that's out this year too so holy I mean, cow i'm also holy excited fuzzy cow well here's one of the problems mario odyssey and assassin's creed origins come out on the same day Oh no! So, two of my favorite oh, series, no. I know, are out at the same time. Um, so I'm super excited for both of those. And I guess another thing, oh, well, you specifically asked 2017. If you're just asking about geeky bucket list in general, I'm also going to say Final Fantasy 16 because I'm always super pumped about the next Final Fantasy. <laughs> I want to know what Have the next mainline that? one is and not the next junky iOS game that they give us. <laughs> like, I, I will skip those. And then... Um, I see BJ quickly writing more ideas into this, and he's reminding me that The Last Jedi is out this year. And yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. Oh gosh. No, The Last Jedi, Star Wars. Uh, yeah, so Mario Odyssey, Assassin's Creed Origins, The Last Jedi. That's my final answer. Uh, um, For me, Spider-Man. There's a new Spider-Man movie coming out in a couple of weeks, or maybe this week as you guys are listening to it. And I am so excited that Spider-Man is my superhero that I grew up with. Tom Holland is awesome as Spider-Man, as Peter. If I have to have a teenage Peter Parker, then I'm glad that it's Tom Holland. So I am geeking out about Spider-Man coming out just super soon. Um, I'm still at this point uh, when we're recording, I haven't played Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood yet, and that's on the bucket list of things I really want to play and experience because, you know, I'm back into the idea of MMOs. Whether or not they fit into my lifestyle, I haven't figured out quite yet how to balance it, but I'm really interested in seeing that and hoping some of my buddies will play or if I'll play with Void if he's still doing it when I get on there. And then The Last Jedi I mean, The Last Jedi, y'all, it's, it's a new mainline Star Wars movie that's not Rogue One. And so I'm hoping I'm hoping that this one is every bit as good as The Force Awakens was, because that is my favorite Star Wars movie now. After having gone gone back and rewatched all the others, I really do think that Force Awakens is my favorite. So I'm super excited about The Last Jedi. Um, you know, bucket list down the road, Kingdom Hearts 3, I am really excited for. 
I I hope to play Final Fantasy 15 at some point when I get a PS4. Uh, I mentioned a few episodes back that next year will be the year that I invest in a used PS4 because of the number of games that are coming out, and that I'm going to have a huge bucket list of items to get through there, too. Oh, yeah, so, you get to play uh, catch-up. That'll be fun to talk about. Yeah, I get to play catch-up on all the PS4 games I haven't touched, so there's a lot there. So I, I just need to... You guys need to let us podcast for a living, like we said earlier, so that I can <laughs> quit my job and play video games and talk about them to you yeah we're, we're definitely not there in terms of scope <laughs> but i mean no. keep, keep dreaming big buddy um i do that's what i do yeah no that we just we do this for fun guys it's fun we like doing this every week yeah um, absolutely it'll take me all of next year to get through that bucket list of ps4 games so y'all will be hearing about that as i go through yeah cool but that's that's what we had for questions thanks for sending in all the questions it's always fun to do these episodes we'll probably do another one maybe around the holidays this year just to give us another week off where we can kind of record ahead of time be evergreen um but for the moment that's all the questions we got so you can keep sending them honestly if you send them to me i will keep putting them into a list and then next time we do one of these i will pull from that list even if it's six months from now so keep that in mind and i still owe an answer to fuzzy cow on reddit i don't want you to think that i've forgotten you um you had asked me uh uh private in private message where you had sent me a question about uh about me being from the south and the idea of southern pride and i am still mulling this over don't get me wrong i'm not ignoring you uh like i think about this a lot as uh, as this summer has gone on and politics have gone on this isn't the place for it to be able to talk about it but uh but i will get back to you on that i promise i really am working through a response that's interesting. Yeah, hey, if you guys ever want to send us questions that don't actually fit into the show, you can do that too. Um, I check all my Reddit private messages and you guys can email. I mean, I usually respond to the emails pretty quick. Every time somebody emails us, I get back to them. Like, I don't let any of the things linger in the inbox. So we do respond. We are active on all the places that we say at the end of the episode, which is right now. So I can say them again. You can write to us with comments, suggestions, or feedback. Our email address is geek2geekcast at gmail.com. Reach us on Twitter at geek 2 geekcast we also have longer discussion threads on the subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash geek to geek cast. And like I asked for last week, let me know if you're interested in a Facebook group like the subreddit. Uh, I would like to uh, know because I'm on Facebook more than I am on Reddit and uh, I forget to check the subreddit. So uh, let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. And also we are, like we've mentioned a couple of times in this episode, part of a podcast network with Rob from the Comic Box and Joe from Geektitude. Please, if you're not listening to their show, Go to geek2geekcast.com, click on their shows, and subscribe. They're fantastic, and I know that they will tickle your fancy. I blog at agreenmushroom.com, and you can find me at GRN Mushroom. That's Green Mushroom without the E's on Twitter. And I stole his two E's and put them in my Twitter at Professor Beej, and I'm also online at bjkeaton.com. We've been Void and Beej with your Geek to Geek podcast. That'll do it for this week. See you next week, geeks. Merka! Woo! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Comics. Hey everyone, this is Rob, your friendly neighborhood comic geek. And this is Liam, the the languishing, lascivious Liam of Langley. Wow, that was extremely illiterate of you. Well, I try. We are the hosts of The Comic Box, part of the geek to geek podcast network. So, join us. Bop, bop. Oh, yeah. Welcome to the Geek to Geek podcast where, no, hang on.